Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, we just missed a really big deer. I mean, like, he must have been a six footer. He jumped that fence there and ran down that pathway. But it wasn't a good shot to capture him anyway. Good morning. Welcome back to the vlog. I am back. I've uh, had a few days off. I've still been at work, but I've been under the weather. I've had a viral infection, not COVID-19. We've done a few lateral flows over the past week and all of them have come back negative. But uh, I think it's been some type of strep throat infection or something like that. I've had a particularly sore throat. So I'm afraid I just wasn't able to make any videos. I didn't really want to talk. That's what it was like. So, uh, Apart from doing Charlie Chaplin star silent movies, I didn't have much option. But uh, we still managed to get a lot done in the past week or two. I've still been in work. Kept myself isolated apart from, obviously I was with Gemma most of the time. Unavoidable, we live together, you know. But she seems to have escaped any adverse effects so far. I'm pretty much out of it today. So let's hope that she doesn't pick it up. Uh, what have we got to talk about? Well, it's six o'clock in the morning. I'm in Clumber again. The seasons are definitely on the turn. I mean, that goes without saying, but there's a smell in the air this morning, which, well, it, it's the first time I've picked it up this year. And it smells like springtime. Spent a lot of time in the unit yesterday tidying the mezzanine section I don't take you into the little storeroom at the back of the office it's going to take a couple of days before we even get close to getting that even half organised and today I was hoping to get into the workshop and have a real good organisation in there and sort out a lot of my tools and uh, yeah, just get stuff ready for tank fabrication in a couple of months time and then we've also been in the beer garden I'll show you when I get back I'll give you a walk around and talk about what we've done there but I spent most of yesterday in there actually yesterday morning at least got some varnish on the tables and things like that and uh, Gemma's been cask in some of the beers we made a week or so ago and we've still got the five pints to come out um, I'm on my own today though so I won't be doing that because I want to ultimately put a little bit in can maybe not so much for the shop but more so I can um, take it with me when I pay a visit to people and then there is of course the Amarillo IPA, which I would also like to see a little bit of that go into can, keg and cask. So we've covered all bases and that will be available on the shop for a limited period, I guess. Harrisonsbrewery.com forward slash shop. And talking of the shop, I also plan to add a build a box feature on there unfortunately it's a paid plugin so I've been toying with the idea do I want to buy this or not so it's going to cost me an annual fee to provide that feature but I think if we sell half a dozen boxes then it'll pay for it and then it's all gravy from there on in so keep your eye out for that I'll let you know when it goes live and because we ship in 12 and 24 cartons it just makes sense for you to be able to Build your own box with what beers you want instead of me setting the mix if you know where I'm coming from. So I'm going to carry on walking these little poopy pooches and then we'll get into the brewery and do a little bit of work proper. I'll tell you what I do have to show you though. Look at this, what the chickens laid. But before we go, look at that, the sun's going to pop up there any minute. And it looks fabulous. 
A little bit of mist on the ground as well, look. What a day. Anyway, check this egg out. It's unbelievable. I mean, that is a large egg. That is a freaking statement. Holy, look at the size of it. It's ginormous. <laughs> I'm having that for breakfast today. So the reason I'm going to crack this on camera, because I think this is just going to be a double yoker, but in the past we've cracked open an egg before, and another freaking egg fell out of the egg. But let's have a look. Double yoker in action. Oh, what a beauty. Looks like a page three girl. Well, maybe not quite as pert. Lovely. Thanks, Jim. Look at them little beauties. Go on then, boys. Go on then. Go on then, Reg. We're in, and uh, I've already made a start. In fact, I spent majority of this morning on the computer trying to figure something out, which I'm now stuck with. But I'm not going to bore you the details. So we've continued in the workshop, as planned, to try and tidy this area up. And realistically, what we're looking to do is make some space and get things organised, I guess, so we can build some big tanks in here. And having a look at what we've got, it isn't really going to be possible to build something like let's say two meters on the diameter if we've got all this stuff in the way so I think what I've got to do ultimately is put everything on wheels so that when push comes to shove we can actually move things out of the way I just want to check as well that I can get stuff out of this door should it be that big so 1600 is the widest we've got there and then I can also have a look what we've got on the height we'll roll it out if needs be and yeah on on the height we do have two meters on the height so that's all right then we can get stuff that's two meters out uh, I don't think anything is gonna be two meters in diameter maybe the mash ton but just to be sure, to be sure. So I'm working on this uh, Joe Bergs, I think it is. Yeah, is that right, Joe Bergs? Bench, and we're kind of looking after it for a mate of mine. I don't use it much. It mainly is just there to store things, and I put stuff on it. Just noticed that this is delaminating slightly there. So I thought while I'm at it, I'm going to refurb the fella a little bit. She's never been 100% kind of sturdy. So what I've decided to do is just remove this bottom brace here. I'm going to rotate this bottom brace so it runs from one side to the next. And we're going to pop some wheels on. We'll pop some wheels on it. That means we can get it in and out of the shop. No problem over there. And also... This is just a crappy hardboard shelf. I might change that out while I'm at it. We'll see. It's bowed, you can tell. It's bowed upwards. Just needs a couple of supports, really, but I might change it out for a thicker piece of timber. Oh, I might do that another day. I've got a lot on. So, ultimately, this is just, uh, yeah, very Scandinavian, in fact. It's almost like a flat pack furniture workbench <clears throat> I do like 
the clamps on there they're good for woodworking but the table with it only being about 600 mil wide doesn't have much stability in you know back to front kind of motion side to side not too bad back to front not too good so as you can see it's assembled with what are notoriously renowned almost Ikea-esque fixings and I imagine uh, there's some dowels in there as well that I'll probably have to release shall we do that with a leather mallet let's have a look what we've got going on we're all betting dowels aren't we I am Wow, it's a tenon. It's actually a mortise and tenon. So that's changed things a little bit because I don't want to actually damage this. So what I'm probably going to do then is we'll stick that back on and we'll take another approach maybe by securing some legs on the inside of here some cross braces even to hold the legs hold the wheels anyway back to the drawing board so I've managed to get four wheels on with doing no more damage than drilling eight holes effectively this timber was part of an old door so I've taken the door apart there's one door jam. Look at that nice solid piece of wood, so why throw it away? Thought I'd recycle it. There's the centre section. In fact, we've got another one up here, so I can show you what it looked like. These doors were reclaimed for the brew shed when we made a door wall. So <laughs> all these doors were screwed to a wall, effectively, to create a door styly wall. And it's just a nice little bit of rustic decor that I'm a fan of. These were surplus to requirements. There's also some more up here which I use for shuttering at the top of this. They don't look that very neat, but it was cheaper than buying plywood at the time. It don't grow on trees, does it? So, very expensive stuff. So, yeah, just a one-door jam, chopped up, inserted into the centre. The wheels are barely on the surface, so get it in the right position and it does actually bind up which is ideal for working then but the main reason behind this look at these dog holes I'll have to get some dog spikes for it the main reason is to make sure everything in the workshop is mobile and we can effectively one-handedly which is what I'm doing now one-handedly pull everything out there we go she's out then that means if we need to manufacture some big tanks in here we've got the space I'm also thinking about relocating that as well I'm not sure if I like it in front of that window anymore and then another project which I might pick up today probably not though is I've got this big sheet of steel here this is for making a welding table but if I'm going to do that then I need to start doing some welding today and I'm not sure if I want to do that considering it's 10 past 3 uh, 10 to 3 already well I've decided since we've got all of this beautiful space <clears throat> that I will utilize the time to turn that big piece of steel here oh it's that heavy I can't even pull it out into a welding table so the idea is same height as this one 800 mil legs are cut to go all the way around the legs are 150 mil short because we're going to mount it on these 150 mil casters to allow it to be a mobile trolley 
and then obviously these casters won't fit onto the end of the box section because of the size of the base plate so these are the off cuts from when I chopped out I'll just show you I chopped out on the front of our new ring rolling machine somewhere to put the trolley jack so I cut into the legs and put these in the scrap bin unfortunately those bits in the scrap bin are just going to be the right size once trimmed down to put on as base plates for our wheels so we just need to clean the paint off of these maybe just one side maybe both we'll see I don't want to die breathing all the fumes in and then we'll drill some holes and we'll weld that on the bottom of the legs before we assemble the legs that makes sense and then the legs are going to be joined together using this box section we're going to have the shelf underneath a hundred mil either side smaller than the tabletop so we can clamp stuff around the edges and whatnot so the top of the legs will be welded directly onto the steel of the table the bottom of the legs will be welded or well, halfway down welded onto the shelf and then the bottom of the legs will be welded onto the wheels I think there's going to be enough strength in the sheet steel it's a little bit thicker than the other stuff and this is a, a, a meter as well we don't appear to have like, too much sagging from one side to the other but it doesn't matter if we do because if that doesn't work I'll just clamp a little bit of 2 by one box section under the saggy areas and we'll prop it up or might even go corner to corner in a diagonal underneath and brace it like that so the centre doesn't dip like into a puddle and the sheet isn't perfectly flat anyway so you know you gotta piss with the cock that you've got so I decided best thing to do was knock the paint off I've drilled the holes it should fit perfectly on there as it does both sides and then I've also put it on the little sanding machine that I've got over here the lumberjack 370 watt build driven to send the BD370 and this little bad boy has uh, made short work of these corners and rounded them up very nicely indeed so the next job is I think hook up the welder onto the welding table and also hook up the or not hook up as much as uh, grab hold of the um, magnetic where are they I've got some magnetic 90s there they are and we'll be using these to set the angle on this one thing I'm thinking about doing as well is setting it as close to this edge as possible if you can see what I mean just so on the outside of the table I don't have a big chunk of leg to kind of bash yourself into I've got that a little bit on the uh, table in the kitchen that I made for Tom and uh, yeah, it looks a bit messy it's a shame really that these have such a big plate on them but of course it's for that so that swivel bit isn't it I did have some other ones where you've got like a centre hole and your bolt goes straight through the middle there like that they're a little bit easier to manage but these are 75 by 21 and the relatively soft rubber wheels you can see that that got a flat spot really rather quickly so we decided to substitute it out so I think that's about right. 
we'll get that on there we'll get it framed <laughs> we'll get it squared up tack it on and take it from there I'm not going to do an extreme close up on these welds and not all of them are square and standing up straight but that's fine because of course there's a wheel going on there so that'll take up any little bits of slack the only important part is that the heights are all the same which they are so we've got the feet on the legs now we just need to stick the little in between a bits on um, because it's going to be a square table probably a bit larger than I really want floating around in here but it'll fit into this corner just here so I want to make sure that at the front we have a space for hanging some of these grinders and stuff on maybe a strip of steel we'll figure that out in a bit so let's lay the legs down. Which legs am I going to choose? Probably we'll have these two as the front. I might go for them too because they look more straight if I'm honest. Yeah, let's go for them too. Una tabla legs. What do you think? I think it looks spot on. So I decided to go with uh, full box section front and back. And then I've gone angle iron either side. I've got the box section in stock, but I thought, with the angle iron pointing out, it's a perfect place for the earth clamp. So I can ac access both sides and whack an earth clamp on there. And it's kind of set back and out the way a little bit. So I'm going to just wait for it to cool down. I've welded most of this on the inside as well, just so we can get the kind of... Uh, there's a weld that you can see a little bit easier just so we can get a piece of board flat on that side and then store the plasma torch the TIG welder whatever else under there as well I'm not going to build anywhere for a gas bottle to kind of sit on it because I'm not going to make this a mobile welding trolley as such for going from anywhere outside of the building well there's no point anyway because I need the three phase the only reason I'm making this on wheels is so we can pull it out during fabrication of some larger items as I said earlier on so I'm just gonna pull out some M6 bolts and we'll bolt these wheels on then we'll flip the bad boy over and I'll see if I can't get the lid on it. I'm thinking maybe I should put the lid on while it's this way up because of course I've got to weld it and wrestle it into position and it would probably be easier upside down wouldn't it on reflection. So welding table V1 I made in a couple of hours back when we were starting the whole brewery project and welded table v2 I also made in a couple of hours but this one I think is a huge improvement and I'm really happy that all feet all four feet touch the floor even on this wonky surface I do think I'm gonna to have to put some reinforcing in the center because if I kind of sit on it, it does flex a little bit. And yeah, there's definitely a chance of it just uh, bending if there's any large weight on there. So a little bit of two by one box section. What I've done is I've welded the outside of these sections here, but not the inside. So if I need to just slot something in then it won't be a problem and I'll be able to get them tied up to the side legs but that's another project out of the way I'm really quite happy with it, it's completely cooled down now so I'll just uh, get some of this stuff out the window there we go and then we'll see if it fits into where I would like it 
to live ultimately. So let's just get that corner in first. Oh, I think we're I think we're cushed it. There we go. That's where the welding table is gonna reside. What we're gonna do with that Joe Berg's table, I'm not sure yet. Because that did live along there. I might pull this welding table across at the side of that one and put the Joburgs across this section here and I think at some point I'll probably relocate that three phase box it used to live just here you can see the plugs on the wall where it was and then we put it over there because that's where I moved the welding table and now we're back here again. That's probably, I don't know, because I'll probably pull that out to use it anyway. Same with the Joburg's table, I could probably pull that out to use that. Now just make sure we've turned the gas off. That's off. Let's turn the welder off. Let's turn the isolator off and remove the plug. There we go, that's everything isolated. And I'm about done. So, still a lot of tidying up to do, but I have been distracted, haven't I, with a great big welding table project, which I've been meaning to do for a heck of a long time. So, let's have a bit of a shot of the workshop as it is now. I think it's still a good workshop, don't you, boys and girls? I think it bloody damn well is. So, that's it. I'm going to sign off. And I hope you've enjoyed the vlog, and heaven knows what I'm going to get up to tomorrow, but we'll see you then.